I'm a huge fan of the Salim Javed Amitabh Bachchan oh. cinema. कोई there is if there is one thing or one person जो कहीं अंदर जाए और बाहर ना आए. My wife. <laughs> that he thinks no this is a mistake i mean i'm not supposed to be here i came to work in a construction company i'm not trained in acting i'm not trained in any of the conventional skills that you think an, an indian film hero needs to possess like dancing or action nothing i'm trained in nothing 3 years later when you see him you realize that his teeth is completely decaying his because he's he's, he's never given water for ablutions his nails have overgrown and he doesn't realize it First time Prithviraj Sukumaran is also playing an animal. He yes. gets transformed into an animal. And there's a moment in the film where, after three years, he finally meets another human. Taking this scene of me coming and opening the letter, and suddenly I, I thought, would he have forgotten to read? My first priority is to hope and pray and somehow make sure. that this film reaches people across the world I honestly do not know about awards whether we are going to get any awards and all that what is right. happening under my eyes and all that's not makeup that's <laughs> that, natural yeah that's real i acha main aaj delhi se mumbai aaya mujhe kal aana tha but when i got to know ki i will get to do your interview are bahut shukriya thank you so that much that i should come and <laughs> jab maine aapke bare mein bahut si cheeze padhi you know many languages you are an actor you are a director you are a singer you won so many awards kerala state award at 24 saal ki umar mein you won national award oh, badi lambi sari list hai matlab so maine film ka naam padha goat life and i thought you are yourself a goat <laughs> greatest of all time <laughs> no i'm not i'm no way near being a goat uh, because i i work in an industry that has names like amitabh bachchan mohan lal mamuti kamal hasan and all which they are all people who have achieved some things that you know i i can only dream of getting close to at some point in my life but this title the goat life is for the life that the actual man lived yeah i know who on who the the film is based on so uh, this is a true story like you know and yeah. everything you see in the film is something that someone lived through that someone experienced and incredibly survived to come out of it alive and tell the world this is what happened so uh, we believed that when we thought of uh, wanting an english title as well uh, we thought there is nothing better than the goat life for what the acronym stands for and also for the fact that the animal goat is such a big part of the narrative so yeah this is for mr najib not for me mujhe pata tha aapka answer yahi ho i know ki because i've seen lot of your interviews acha one thing i want to understand please uh, i've met lot of south stars yeah. interviewed lot of them even kamal hasan sir and many of them how the actors from our south are so humble so grounded even he says ki no i haven't done much of this yet to do a lot and matlab uh, वो एक जो होता है ना एक सुपरस्टार वाला ही आराम से बालकनी में चल रहे हैं गैलरी में चल रहे हैं देर इज नो आपको लग ही नहीं रहा कि अच्छा वो वहां वो खड़े हैं सो हाउ 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 यू मेंटेन दिस सो आई मीन आई आई कैन क्लेम इट टू बी समथिंग दैट इज अ क्वालिटी ऑफ साउथ एक्टर्स बिकॉज आई हैव मेट सिमिलर पीपल फ्रॉम द नॉर्थ फ्रॉम फ्रॉम हिंदी सिनेमा हु यू नो हु हैव हैव बीन रियली एंड अनबिलीवेबली इंस्पिरेशनल इन टर्म्स ऑफ हाउ मच दे हैव अचीव्ड and uh, how much they still give invest themselves into the craft so i don't think it's something that is exclusive to the south but i'll take kamal sir's example you know uh, see that is a man whose entire life has been about cinema i think kamal sir debuted as a child artist yeah. when he was 4 years old or something and his entire life has been about cinema if you sit down and speak to kamal sir for 15 minutes today you will realize he still thinks there is so much more he could do yes that there is so much more he could achieve so much more he could give back to cinema and what am then i talking about you know like uh, so uh, and i and i agree with kamal sir i agree with kamal sir for the genius that that man is for the kind of uh, knowledge and for the kind of uh, in depth analysis of the medium that he is capable of i still think he is he can give a lot more to cinema so yeah i i also believe it comes from a very keen sense of self awareness 
about what you are capable of, what have you done and what more can you do. And uh, much like him, although nowhere close to that extent, my life is also entirely about cinema. I am not qualified edu education wise. Uh, I, I do not have a degree. If tomorrow I stop cinema, there is nobody who is going to give me a job because I am not qualified to do any other job. So my You will get a lot of jobs. No, <laughs> Being humble, you will get a lot of jobs. I wouldn't hire me because I don't know anything. I, the only thing I know is cinema. And uh, the only thing I want to know is cinema. The only thing I want to know more of is cinema. The only thing I am interested about is cinema. Yeah. So, Achha, uh, जब ट्रेलर देखा हमने yeah. और जो उसके नीचे कमेंट्स हैं, आई एम श्योर यू मस्ट हैव रेड ट्रेलर देखा कमेंट्स yeah. हम जाहिर पढ़ते हैं एज अ जर्नलिस्ट वी नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड हाउ पीपल आर फीलिंग ठीक है अदर रिव्यूअर्स व्हाट दे आर सेइंग उसके नीचे लोग क्या कह रहे हैं तो एक चीज जो मुझे सेंस हुई कि बॉस इसमें नेशनल अवार्ड पक्का <laughs> या इसमें ऑस्कर आएगा तो हैव यू ऑल्सो फेल द सेम इस फिल्म को बनाते हुए Because you must have seen the film. अब yeah. तक आपने तो पूरी देख ली होगी हमें तो सिर्फ एक डेढ़ मिनट का ट्रेलर देखने yeah. को मिला है सो डू यू फील कहीं ना कहीं गट फीलिंग होती है जब हम अच्छा काम करते हैं हमको पता होता है अंदर से कि हाँ वी हैव डन सो आई आई ऑनेस्टली डू नॉट नो अबाउट अवार्ड्स वेदर वी आर गोइंग गेट एनी अवार्ड इन ऑल दैट आई हैव हैड द प्रिवलेज ऑफ बींग रिकोगनाइज ऑन एंड एंड बींग कन्फर्ड विद अवार्ड मल्टीपल टाइम्स इन माई करियर एंड अवार्ड एन आइस अवार्ड एन आइस नेक्स्ट डे इन द न्यूज पेपर दिल बी न्यूज in that day you will get a lot of messages there will be some memes saying no oh, national award or state award and all that and then life is the same nothing changes so my first priority is to hope and pray and somehow make sure that this film reaches people across the world because ultimately we made the film for that yeah. not for the awards we have made this film for lakhs and lakhs of people to come to the theaters and watch on a big screen this epic adventure or misadventure that this man had to live through and the incredible fact that he made it out of it alive to be able to be amongst us today you know and tell the tale that is number one priority uh, awards i am not uh, like yeah i mean if i get them nice if the film gets them even nicer Uh, if blessy more than anybody else if the director gets the best director award i'm i'd be the happiest person but i'd be more happy if the film becomes a blockbuster that's really motivating and inspiring yeah. <laughs> acha take me through the journey of this film because mm. it's a long journey yeah we started i think 2008 yes. 2009 yeah and then some road block some budget issues some other issues then You you shooting in the Jordan and lockdown happened. Yeah. So, is film ko banane me, मतलब वाके में खून पसीना और सालों लगे हैं. जी बिल्कुल. Because uh, the thing is, even back in 2009, when Blessy first approached me with the film, his vision was still the same. It was this big, this grand, and this expensive to make. And it was impossible back then to be pulling something off from Malayalam. In all honesty, I think it would have been at least tough to say the least. to do something like this in hindi back then because that's a kind of money we have spent on the film that's a kind of effort we have uh, put in behind the film so it took 10 years for the project to finally take off in terms of being able to film because thankfully in that one decade a lot of things had evolved had changed uh, industry dynamics in cinema in general and especially in malayalam cinema had gone through a lot of changes and although even in 2018 it still remained a very very big risk we had thankfully reached a place where okay we can now think of it we can now sort of imagine a film this big and then we started shooting and we thought all our struggles are over so you know we are shooting <laughs> and then the pandemic struck and we had to stop shoot for almost two years in between but and then we had to go back to algeria and then back to jordan and then come back to kerala and finish the shoot but you know one thing i'm so proud of is that through these 16 years of setting up the project beginning shoot having to stop shoot restart shoot and finally finish it then one and a half years of post production there has not been a single moment of compromise on this film there is not one second of this film's run time which is it's okay that that will do there's not one second of this film and that is something i'm very proud of i hope that shows on screen i hope when you see the film you realize that wow i mean this kind of attention to detail and you know right. this kind of effort is not very common <laughs> yeah right acha ye jo insaan hai yeah 
اس کی جو جرنی ہے دیٹ از وہ جو ہمیں ابھی دکھ رہی ہے اٹس ویری ٹف اسٹک ہو جاتا ہے اور مطلب جو کچھ اس کے ساتھ ہوتا ہے وہ آئی تھنک ہم بڑے پردے پہ ہی دیکھنا چاہیں گے بٹ کون سی وہ چیز تھی جس نے آپ کو بھی اندر سے ہلایا ہو یار مطلب مین اس کو یہ بھی اس سے بھی گزرنا پڑا یو نو سو دا نجیب اسٹوری کیم ٹو لائٹ دا ورلڈ نیو آف نجیب بیکاز این آتھر کال بین ڈسائڈ ٹو رائٹ اے بک آن ہز لائف and the book became a smash hit so even back in 2009 when i said yes to the film the book was already a smash hit and as we speak today it remains one of the largest selling books in the history of malayalam uh, so najib and rg vitham is ingrained in the malayali culture right now and you read the book and you realize how my god i mean you think castaway was tough see this experience this read this this is just another level you know because not only is it confinement not only is it solitude not only is it entrapment it is also slavery you know it is the absolute take away of a human's identity where in 3 years time which is the length of time that he was in the desert he almost becomes dehumanized he is now one of the animals you know anything that is human to be doing he doesn't do anymore and Uh, you realize after three years you see this man in his completely transformed self he's almost lost his ability to communicate in human language because he's only interacting with animals okay. and uh, you know he's he, his body language his uh, his gestures his gait it's all changed so when you see him in the middle of 200 sheep you you think he's one of the animals you know so that's a kind of uh, ordeal this is but in all honesty the magnitude of what najib must have gone through struck me when i reached the location yeah it's a film set it's a set and all the animals the goats and the camels everything are brought there and you know if you look that side there are like 50 cars and 20 tents and a 150 member crew it's all there but that one moment when you are in the solitude of the character in front of the camera and in your your eye line is free and you're staring out into the desert and all you can hear is a goats you know bleating behind you you realize oh my god for three and a half years this it is unbelievable i mean you have to be there to experience that it is unbelievable and uh, i'm so thankful that we have world class talents absolute geniuses like ar rahman sir rasul pukuti sir sunil k as our cinematographer to try and bring that immersive experience to somebody watching this film and i think that is one of the most beautiful things about the film that it makes you feel what najib might have felt you know it makes you feel what that man must have gone through and uh, just because a film is shot beautifully or just because you spend a lot of money on a film it's not necessary that you're able to achieve that yeah مجھے آپ کی بات سے ایک چیز سمجھ میں آئے گی فسٹ ٹائم پرتھوی راج سکماران از آلسو پلینگ این اینیمل سو دا کیریکٹر آرک ود ان دا فیچر فلم نریٹو آف دا اسٹوری از ڈیوائڈ انٹو تھری فیسز دا فرسٹ فیسز وی کال اٹ دا تھری ویک مارک دا تھری منتھ مارک اینڈ دا تھری ایئر مارک سو دا فرسٹ فیسز آف ہم ریچنگ دا ڈیزرٹ اینڈ دا فرسٹ تھری ویکس where he realizes he's stuck and his initial reaction is that of denial that he thinks no this is a mistake i mean i'm not supposed to be here i came to work in a construction company so i'm 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 i need to go i need to leave and he's trying to tell the people around him whoever he sees that there's been a mistake my visa is not this that and at the end of the third week you cut the narrative and then the story reopens 3 months later where he is now angry he's completely angry at himself for having decided to come and he's angry at god he's angry at everything and everyone around him then you meet him 3 years later and you realize that he's not even fully human anymore you know because he's with the animals he shares food with the animals he is one of them and uh, he no longer so it's as an actor you know it's 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 beautiful because I remember I walk in to the sets day one and we've had this enclosure with about 200 sheep and there is a stench 
right? There is a stench of animal excrement and all that. And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, oh my God, I mean, it's just, it smells awful here. But I was thinking, after a point, he would have lost the judge. He would not. He wouldn't have smelled it anymore. You know, he wouldn't have realized that there is a stench. Uh, so, three years later, when you see him, you realize that his teeth is completely decaying. His na- because he's, he's he's never given water for ablutions. His nails have overgrown, and he doesn't realize it. And his entire hair and beard <coughs> is lice infested and all that, which is which means he's like an animal and. He's lost his ability to fully communicate in language. So when he speaks, you realize he's not able to form unbroken, continuous state sentences. And there's a moment in the film where after three years, he finally meets another human. Uh, and other than his masters, they are Babs. And uh, that person hurriedly gives him a written letter. So we are taking this scene of me coming and opening the letter. And suddenly I, I thought, would he have forgotten to read? I mean, you don't forget fully to read, no. but if you have not read anything for three years, what would happen? Like what a child learns alphabets at four, and then pretty much every day of your life, you're doing some exercise of yes. either reading or seeing letters or some exercise that is connected with alphabets. If nothing of that happens for three years, what would happen? So then I told my director that there is something I want to do and he said okay. Uh, so as always he says he will roll the camera and then he won't cut it. He will say when you are done let us know. So I, what I felt like doing is open the letter and he is not able to, to understand what is written although it is his own language and he is trying to read, he is trying his best to read and he is blinking his eyes and it takes him a few good seconds to realize that he is holding the paper upside down. Because he has lost sight of the fact that the letters are upside down, you know. So that is the kind of change, metamorphosis, the man and the character has gone through. So it's just, uh, I've done, I don't know how many films, I've done what, 100, 120 films. Yes. I've not ever experienced what I have experienced while playing Najib. Abhi you said ki, uske nakhun bad jate hain. Zahir hai, wo ek janwar ban jate hain. So when you were shooting, daily aapko make up karne mein kitna time lagta tha? Iske liye, matlab, to get ready yeah. into because it's not a normal character yeah so we had one of the finest makeup artists of the country i don't even know how many national awards and state awards he's won i think it's become like a common thing now we i don't think people even now congratulate him anymore when he wins an award because it's that common young guy called ranjit Am- ambadi so we had him uh, for the film uh, and his primary prerogative was to make sure that my look is correct uh, it would take me an hour and a half okay. to get ready in the morning. Okay. Uh, when we, the initial days when we first landed on the appearance, it used to be like a three hour long process. But then once Ranjit knew this is what we are at, he would get about four people, there would be about one, two, yeah, five, pe- five people working on me at the same time. So that we cut down on the time. So it would take me about an hour and a half. And we used to start shooting most days at around 5.30, 5.45 in the morning okay. to catch the early morning desert light because there are a lot of scenes that happen during sunrise. Uh, so I would, uh, so what I would use to, do, what I would do is I would wake up at around uh, 2 and I wouldn't shower, but I'd go and do, uh, I'd go do my workout. And then I wouldn't shower because uh, if I shower, I'd end up looking fresh. So I wouldn't shower and, and I hate, I, I actually, I'm the kind of guy who actually some days at lunch break will go and have a second shower in my vanity van. Oh. And then night, I sh- so I'm, I'm that kind of guy. Uh, I wouldn't shower and I just said, sit there for the makeup and I'm sweating and with that I have to do the makeup and I would land up on set at 4, 4.30 and wait for the sun to come up. And uh, I think after a while, it began taking a toll on all of us because, you know, I had dark circles and my eyes were puffy. Uh, so all that, what is right. happening under my eyes and all, that's not makeup. That's <laughs> that, natural. Yeah, that's real. I. So it began taking a toll on all of us, but that's what it took for us to create a convincing version of the character. And I'm so thankful that I had such amazing technicians surrounding me, starting from the director, of course, uh, Blessy, the cinematographer, the production designer, the sound designer, Rasul Pukuti, Ranjit Ambadi, the makeup man, 
it's it's their joint creative effort that has uh, helped me create the on screen version of najib i'll get the limelight i'll be giving in, giving the interviews because i am the actor right. but uh, it will be absolutely wrong to say that it was all my creation it was not no but yeah. you're giving due credits to everyone yeah they deserve you have, it you have, you have named everyone i think yeah. and with the very much respect and very much uh, jitna mujhe lagta hai credit diya jana chahiye aap us cheez ko apne interviews mein bol rahe hain they, <laughs> no, they, they, they deserve it because yeah. i mean i i always i have always felt this you know like uh, because i have had i have had a lot of uh, big hits as an actor yes. in my career and the conversation always ends up about being me like oh prithviraj in mm-hmm. prithviraj film prithviraj yes. so you google rg with them i'm sure you will read prithviraj rg with them no it's not prithviraj rg with them it is blessies it is uh, sunil's uh, you know it is prashant madhav's it is ranjit ambadi's the film only belongs to me as much as it belongs to any one of them so that's what makes you prithviraj <laughs> one dialogue yeah. andar se koi bahar na aa sake yeah. matlab aata hai usme shuru mein it shoots yeah agar koi there is if there is one thing or one person jo kahi andar jaye aur bahar na aaye hmm. kaun hoga my wife aisa <laughs> <laughs> yeah. kyun yeah i mean i i am i don't have a i i'm not i'm a very kind of uh well i mean for lack of a better word aloof kind of a guy because i don't have a big social circle hmm. you will very seldom find me in parties and i ha- actually hate crowds i like crowds as in like i don't like to go into like one of those you know disco tex and all. i'm not I'm, i'm not comfortable in places like that so it's very tough for me to let somebody into my deeply personal space and there's only one person there which is my wife so acha a little bit i want to ask about your journey also mm-hmm. when you thought ki i'll be a hero or i'll come into films at what age i never did i i was not somebody who wanted to be an actor i was not somebody who was trained to be an actor i still am not trained i'm not trained in acting i'm not trained in any of the conventional skills that you think an, an indian film hero needs to possess like dancing or action nothing i'm trained in nothing i'm just you know uh, whatever i've learned i've learned by doing cinema i was pursuing a degree in australia yeah and i came back for a summer vacation when i got offered a film and i told the director no i have to go back and join my college in such and such date and he said no but i'll finish shooting much before that so look at it as a summer job you are anyway sitting at home bored i thought yeah you know anyway vacation sitting at home bored um so i'll just do this so i did it and that film became a big hit and that's how it all started in all honesty it took it took me about five films i think my, it's when my fifth film it was my fifth film i think released that i finally came to terms with the fact that i am not this is my life now you know because in in foreign universities you can uh postpone a semester okay uh, like you can write to the university and say uh, i'm taking a break and i'll uh, rejoin my next semester uh, like the next term so six months you can take a break so twice i took extensions and the university was fine about it and in in, by, in that one year uh, i had already done about four films which is when it struck me that i am making an excuse by giving these extensions because i don't think i'm going back i'm beginning to like what i am doing and it was my mom you know my mother uh, she is also an actor i remember one day asking my mother that uh, you know i you spend so much money on my education and everything i think i need to go back and finish my degree and then i'll come back uh, and see what's happening my mother asked me okay you go back you finish your degree and then when you come back after 2 years if you then get an opportunity to do a film will you do it i said yeah i would love to do it then she said then don't go because there is no guarantee that when you come back you'll get this opportunity so that made a lot of sense to me so i did not go back so that's why i became an actor wow <laughs> um, normally mothers they do say ki first complete your studies no no she's an incredible anything else. my mother is an incredible woman yeah acha <laughs> <laughs> family was into films yeah tab bhi kabhi aapko nahi laga ki actor banna hai no never, i mean, you were never fascinated with the film world not at all and i i wasn't cut out to be an artist i was very shy i was very cl- I still am very clumsy uh, like you know i was i had this big specs and i was always into books and i was oh. yeah, i was bookish and you know uh, uh, i think all my my family thought i would end up becoming like 
enter civil services or, oh. or something like that. Then I wanted to be an army officer. So then I joined Sainik school and I really, really was very taken with the idea of joining the forces and uh, I would have joined the forces. Uh, but that is when unfortunately when half, not halfway, when I started my 10th grade, my dad passed away. And then I had to, you know, uh, because in Sainik school you can only be, uh, be in the boarding, you can't be a day scholar. And my brother had already joined a college in Tamil Nadu and my mom was suddenly alone. So I had to withdraw from Sainik school. And then I joined another school and that is how that sort of uh, journey came to an end. But cinema was never in my, my purview of things. If at all I have ever thought of cinema when I was in college, it was more about becoming a director. I, I was interested in writing. I know I, I could write a bit when I was in school and college and I thought maybe I'll write a screenplay or maybe make a film or something. I would I never thought I would be an actor. So now you act, you yeah. direct, yeah. you produce, sing, <laughs> everything. I mean I, I try. <laughs> Trying very well. Achha, usme ek fayda to hota hoga, paise bach jata. Ah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to hire different people for that. Yeah, so my production company is fairly successful. I run a production company called Prithviraj Productions. Yeah. Which is also distributing this film. Yeah. Uh, it's fairly successful uh, because the company does not have to pay its lead actor. No, <laughs> so <laughs> I get no money. <laughs> very honest. <answer>. Yeah. <laughs> Achha, lastly, any Hindi film dialogue which is your favorite, and you can speak ya fir wo wala andar se koi bahar na aa sake that has hit me hard yeah. main wo bar bar i am <laughs> like abhi main subah se char panch bar maine trailer to bara dekha i mean i you know i am i am a huge fan of the salim javed amitabh bachchan oh. cinema jab tak baithne ko na jagah aa jaye chup chap khade raho i love i mean i i love all that diva ragnipat you know hmm. all that series i mean me and my writer who writes my directorials, Murli Gopi, we are huge Amitabh Bachchan fans. Uh, we are huge Manmohan Desai fans. Oh. We are huge Salim Javid fans. So, uh, we think uh, Manmohan Desai sir uh, is one of the greatest filmmakers the country has ever produced. Because making mainstream populist cinema yes. and being able to find a connect with such a narrative to somebody who is taking that 20 rupee ticket and making that person clap, making that person cry is an incredible craft. Yeah, yeah. It's an incredible craft. And Manmohan Desai sir was a master yeah. at it, you know. And so I'm a big fan of that era of Hindi cinema. So yeah, I mean there's a lot, lot many dialogues that I love, but I can't reproduce no anything. Problem. No problem. Having said that, this I'm I've, a Hindi film of mine is releasing very soon. Yes. Called Bade Mia Chote yeah, Mia. I was in, coming to that. In which I speak non-stop. So, <laughs> <laughs> so usme we are expecting, uh, should we expect a surprise? Kuch, kuch different karne wale? Well, I hope people find me to be different in that film. It's just diametrically opposite to what I've done in this film. So, <laughs> if ever two films of mine had to release close to each other, I would actually pick these two films because uh, that is completely different. You know, that's this very uh, super stylish, suave yeah. antagonist who who's just really, you know, like, let's say like a, like an Indian version of Tony Stark, you know, and then there is this. So, yeah, I'm, I'm happy that uh, Bade Mia Chote Mia is also releasing because when I'm assuming this, these two films form a really nice two film resume of myself as an actor. And dono mein ek cheez common hai, Jordan mein dono shoot. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, I was shooting in the UK for my directorial. When Ali Abbas Afar calls me and uh, he told me that, listen, man, I need you to give me three days of dates because I have to shoot your that one scene and your portions in a song. So please, you have to find time and come. I said, yeah, I'll come. Where is the shoot? I asked. And it's this, you know, it's in this really beautiful place called Akaba. And I'm like, right. <laughs> Very beautiful. Yeah. I've so been to that <laughs> when when the film was shooting there. Yeah. So I then told Ali, Ali. Apart from the local Bedouin people there, I don't think there are many people in the world who would by now know Akaba and Vadiram better than me <laughs> <laughs> because I have spent that kind of time in those places. Uh, and yeah, I went back to Akaba after this film. The first time I went back to Jordan is to shoot Bade Mia Chote Mia. And uh, it's strange when the director of RG Vitham uh, called me to first discuss the promotional plans for the film. 
he caught me and I asked him, make a wild guess where I am. So he knew I was not in India. So he thought I was in the UK still shooting for my directorial. So I told him, make a wild guess where I am. So he said, where? I said, I'm in Akaba. And he was like, what? Haven't you had enough of that place? So yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was nice to go back there and uh, finish off Bademia, Chotemia just before the release of uh, The Goat Life. Yeah. Hopefully, both the films will do well. We hope thank cinema you. does well. Thank you so and much. Thank you so much. It was so lovely talking to you. Nice talking I've to you. I've learned how to be more humble <laughs> when you are more successful. So thanks a lot. Thank for you that. so much. Yeah. And wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah.